color fonts. This right here is a color font and there's something that we can now use in our projects. They have different color schemes that you can choose from on the fly in CSS. And I'm also gonna show you how you can create your own color schemes as well. All right, so something to note, you, these are available here on Google Fonts, fonts.google.com. We're gonna use this one down here. Um, and also browser support. Here's uh, can I use.com. I basically Firefox is out of the question at the moment. I uh, so you would just have to have a different font fallback essentially for that to work. So I'm going to show you exactly how to get this integrated into a project, how to customize them. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022, and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, so let's start off here by going to fonts.google.com right up there. And you can already see uh, <laughs> they're showing one right here. Um, but what we want to do is choose this option, show only color fonts. All right, and so <laughs> there's not a huge selection. There's nine of them right now. Um, so the one we'll, we'll experiment with, you can experiment with any of these, is going to be Nabla right down here. It's just like a, you know, obviously this is not the type of font you want to stick everywhere on your website. You don't want to use it on every project, uh, but it's going to give us, you know, just uh, a quick way of uh, just demonstrating how to use these fonts. So um, as you can see right here, I already had one added. But what you want to do is come down here where it says regular 400, which is the only weight of this font. It's just I uh, just click plus and it'll show up right over here in this section on the right. Um, we're going to use the link method of integrating this font. So we'll just copy that and we'll go to our code editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code. I already have an index.html. Nothing fancy happening here. Let me just put color fonts up here in the title. I am linking a CSS main.css file, which is right here, and just has a, a body rule set. So um, right before the CSS, we will paste that in. I'm gonna hit Control-B to get rid of that sidebar. All right, and let me get this all looking better. And we're just gonna have one an H1. And it said, it's going to say WO, two letters. The reason being, I want this to be real large so you can see it large enough on the side here in this video. So uh, we have our WO up here. Of course, it's not hooked up to the font yet. And just getting the font ready to go uh, based on its default color scheme. And you're going to see that these have uh, color schemes and all that good stuff. Uh, it's real simple. So all we have to do is just take our H1 element and let's make this a little bit bigger. And I'm going to just say font family. Nabla. There we go. <laughs> it's just tiny little thing up there. Uh, let's make it larger. So we'll do font size. We're going to get real large, 20 rem units. All right. And let's also adjust the line height to like 0.5 m units. There we go. All right. So as you can see, just like it's it's real type, uh, just like any other font uh, that we can modify in the browser here. Um, and as you can see, if we get up a little bit closer to this one, you can see it has uh, it has gradients that are worked in with it already. Now, what's really cool is a lot of these fonts they ship with different color schemes or palettes by default. So, how do you find where the palette is, or what palettes and what colors a font actually has? Uh, there's a cool tool. Let me come over here and see if is this it? Nope, that's not the right window. It's right here. I uh, this is called. Okay, it's called wakamifondue.com or something like that. <laughs> I'll link it in the YouTube description. So you can just download that font. Now, any fonts at Google, on fonts.google.com, like right here, you can click right down here, download all, all right? So when you have it selected. So when you do that, 
we'll open it up and you'll see this TTF file right here. You drag that to your desktop and you can just drag that on top of this fondue tool. So I already did that. Let's drop it here. It says it's working. And it's gonna give you information about this font. Now, if you come down, if you click on color up here, it's gonna tell you all of the palettes that it has. So by default, this is the one that starts off with right here. Um, but we can also choose um, any of these down here and we could use them as a starting point to create our own custom color schemes with this font. So I'll show you how to do that. Let's go back. All right, so here's how this works essentially. It's a little bit of a setup, but not too bad. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say font palette, and we're gonna say, this is gonna be a property. We're just gonna call it custom. And then above here, we're gonna say at font palette values, name is custom. And what we say is font family without quotes here, nabla. And then we could say base palette. We'll say two for instance. All right, so let's save that and there we go. So if we refer back to our little tool here, you can see it shows, it's showing this palette right here, this blue one. So let's try font palette three. All right, so yep, that was the next one for, look at that, I like that, the look of that one. That would look cool like on a, a dark background or even a white background looks good, five, and so on and so forth. All right, so let's say for instance, uh, we'll go back to two and we want to uh, use this as a starting point. Maybe we wanna change just like the face, you know, the, the, the face gradient or something like that. Uh, here's how you do it. So essentially, you type in override colors and then we can tab in afterwards and we designate, we, for, it, it takes two values. First is the, a numeric value, meaning the color like this would be color one and then space. And then you could put in like an RGB function. You could put in a hex value for the color. You could put in just like red or something or teal for instance. And what happens there? You could see right down there, the number one, the first color will affect this area, this area and this area. So you, it's kind of a matter of uh, experimenting. So if we change this to number two, it looks like it changed nothing. Number three, okay, so that's the upper area. Um, let's leave this back to one. Now, of course, we can specify multiple by putting a com comma afterwards. I uh, will say number two is gonna be red, for instance. What happens there? All right, nothing seemed to happen there. So let's change this to three. All right, there we go. So that's how we get the sides. And you could keep on doing this, of course, going through all throughout the colors. I uh, six green for instance and this obviously looks very pukey <laughs> it's not a good color scheme but this is how you customize the colors now of course you don't have to start with a base palette you can customize them all from scratch i uh, and it's going to it's going to default back to the original uh, or the default color scheme when you don't specify the base palette property and that's essentially it i i think it's going to this is obviously very early there's only nine fonts but i uh, I think we're gonna be able to see uh, a lot more in the future, and I think it'll look really cool, um, obviously, if it's integrated and used properly in the proper context. All right, everybody, hopefully you found that interesting. I know I did. I think for certain use cases, it could be really cool to integrate these fonts into a project where it would be necessary or complimentary or whatever. I think it would be cool. Anyhow, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.